Hello YouTube. For the next video series we're going to be using a, an IDE called Eclipse. Many of you may already have it, but this is a prerequisite for the following series. Uh, so let's go ahead and download it really quick. To get to the website it's easy enough. It's www.eclipse.org. I'll take you here. Now, something else you might need is a Linux operating system. You need to be running Linux. Uh, that is because we're going to be sharing a lot of the libraries that Linux has with the BeagleBone because we're also running Linux on the BeagleBone. So that being said, let's go ahead and click the download button here and download the C version because we're going to be developing in C. So my Linux box is 64 bit, so I'm going to download the 64 bit version and we're going to just choose a place to put it. So I'm going to save the file and I'm going to save it to my. Uh, development folder. But I'll just download it here for now. Not there. It's giving me issues, so we'll just save it there. So right there, we'll let it go in and let it finish downloading. Okay, so our download has finished here. So if you're on a Ubuntu like I am here, you can just click on it and it'll take you to the archive manager. And here you can just decompress it wherever you're going to be using it. In my case, we're going to be leaving it in my home directory under a folder called development. But if for whatever reason you're not on uh, on Ubuntu like I am, we'll go the long way. So I'm pretty sure you guys know how to decompress a file to, with a GUI. So we'll do it through the terminal here. So open up a terminal window and you're going to type the command tar that uh, with the with the options VXZF and you're gonna type your file here so let's look at the files in the directory oops let's go ahead and change to the directory we need to go to so there it is so we'll go ahead and type the command in and we're gonna decompress Eclipse and it should automatically decompress it to the current directory so that should be it and there it is so we'll go ahead and remove the the file here and there you go we have a clean so we'll go ahead and navigate to the directory to make sure everything is there and yes everything seems to be there so we'll go ahead and exit so now we've officially downloaded and installed Eclipse we'll go ahead and navigate to it so it's in our development folder our Eclipse and there it is it doesn't have an icon We'll make a link and we'll put it here. So there it is. Now it should run. So now we'll go ahead and close it and we'll make we'll choose our workspace. A workspace, in case you guys don't know, is where all your files are going to be while you're working on Eclipse. By default, we have uh, Eclipse opens up to your home directory and creates a folder called workspace. This is where all your files will be stored everything you do on Eclipse will be put here so this is okay for most people if that's what you want but I'm gonna save it in a folder called development so that makes it so much easier because I'll know exactly where to look and kinda makes more sense to me but anyways that's that's that so um, you can make this your default I'm not because I usually change workspaces depending on what I'm doing but this is okay so go ahead and let it run and then it'll open up to its homepage and make it full screen for you guys to see a little better so this is what Eclipse should open up to it's a little homepage here but we don't really need any of this because we already know what we're doing so we'll go ahead and start a new project and it's going to be a C project <laughs> and then we're gonna name it automatic headlights automatic headlights and then we'll make it a cross GCC and we'll leave that how it is uh, we'll leave that how it is because we're not even going to be compiling on this computer and close your welcome window that's all you had to do just close your welcome window so as you can see our project is now here oops our project is now here and we are ready to work so if we wanted to make a new source file we can just go to new and click 
source file and we're going to name it uh, the main.c program uh, we'll leave it as it is you can leave it as none but this should be more than enough and then we'll just click finish and here we'll be able to type up our document and then you can start programming so you put include let's see just something simple include stdio.h main um, oops I forgot to put void anyways so then we'll just print uh, something to the screen oh but you want to be grammatically correct guys come on don't make, don't make mistakes like that and we'll print a new line just to make sure it works right so there you go now we would then in order to correctly put this on your beagle bone you would have to s ftp into it and then ssh and compile on it which to be honest i prefer that way it makes it a little easier i don't know there's there's other ways to do it so there's um you could actually compile an arm program on your computer here but i don't recommend it because it's a lot more work than some people might say it's easier and once you do it once that's probably it you won't have to do it again but I find it very cumbersome to have to do all that. I think it's easier just to put the uh, source code on the, the BeagleBone and just compile it because the BeagleBone does just fine with that. Not only that, but you'll make sure it works correctly. Anyways, now that we have <coughs> our simple little program here, all it's going to do is print uh, this little string onto the screen. So that being said, let's go ahead and SFTP into the BeagleBone. Okay, so I've gone ahead and connected to BeagleBone and it seems to be plugged in and working so let's go ahead and test if we can connect let's go ahead and ssh into the beaglebone so that's the ip address to my beaglebone and i'll type my password in and there you go we have connected now for the following process if you haven't done so already we need to install the gcc compiler in order to do that you need internet access so you may need to connect your BeagleBone to the Ethernet port on your router so let me do that now so our Ethernet has not received an IP address we'll give it a few more seconds okay so now we have an IP address and we're connected to the internet so in order to work on this specific model um, I have installed uh, Ubuntu on it as well so we can use the standard apt uh, get command to install GCC so we'll go ahead and do that now so if you didn't have it installed you would run the sudo apt get command so we'll go ahead and do that now so right there we're gonna install GCC the the C code compiler it'll just ask us for permission and we'll say yes and it'll go through the installation process okay so it's gone ahead and installed GCC onto the BeagleBone so now we can compile our C code onto the on the BeagleBone itself so before we do that we must put the code on, on the, uh, the BeagleBone so in order to do that I found the best way to do it was to use SFTP so easy to do this so we'll go ahead and log in the same way we do oops cancel oops no. We'll go ahead and SFTP into it. Type Chris and connect to it. Type our password in. And we are logged in. You can use a put command to put files. So we're gonna, if you recall, we, we were developed in our home directory and we were under development. So that's where we have our automatic headlight project right which is our next project I don't know if I mentioned it anyways so we'll put everything in that directory with the wildcard and then we'll do home Chris which is this um, might be confusing but the first half is the 
the input which you're going to want to put in the, uh, the beagle bone and I have the same username on my beagle bone so that might be a little confusing but kind of kind of keep this those two distinguished so the left hand side is what's on the desktop PC which I'm working on and the right hand side is what's on the beagle bone just so for ease of access so there you go now if we list the home directory here you'll see that we have main.c now we just compile it and call it hello world dot no we'll just leave it like that so main.c and it will hello world but for some reason it's not picking it up oh I'm forgetting the most obvious command dot o which is the output oops I made a mistake spelling there you go now we'll save it and we'll resend it you can use the same command and recompile so there you go now we've compiled hello world so now we can list it make sure it's there and we can actually run it now so to run it all you do is put dot slash and then hello world and there you go we've typed hello world and it was successfully compiled on the beagle bone so you, that's easy enough right so we have did we've installed eclipse for c development and we've also compiled a c program on the beagle bone itself so now we can create far more complex programs and use them on the beagle bone so in the next video i'll be showing you guys a simple little library i've created for programming the BeagleBone to pretty much do what you want. So we have a simple library of controlling the ADC pins and the GPIO so far. It's going to grow guys. Hopefully I can get some help. So don't forget to check out the forum at projectsbb.com. That's projects with an S, bb.com. So go ahead and go to the forum guys and put your comments in there. I'll be able to get to you guys, back to you guys as fast as possible. So if you guys like this video, hit that like button. And if you haven't done so already, subscribe, guys. All right, thanks for watching. We'll see you guys in the next video.